Okay, here we're looking at a Tektronix T932. Very popular scope um, some years back and uh, still popular on eBay. Uh, commands a pretty good price usually. Um, this scope is in very good condition as far as the case. Very clean, shiny, and there was only one flaw with this unit when I got it, and that's that in the delivery process, it had fallen apparently on uh, its corner, and this corner piece had broken out, and this bayonet had been jabbed in. I carefully super glued this corner piece back in again and there is a tiny chip right here that's missing. But outside of that, it's uh, in very good condition. Point that out so there's no surprises. Okay, we're going to introduce you to just a couple of the features and test it out. Like, uh, We'll start out with the probe adjustment. Uh, probe adjustment point is right here. It generates a square wave approximately a kilohertz and um, We're going to utilize that square wave to um, Compensate the probe which is to adjust the capacitance of the uh, probe and feed line so that we get the the least amount of loss uh, highest frequency response All right, I had a Jerry rigged a little adapter here so I could fit my probe into the uh, uh, probe test point and, uh, and still have a hand free to make the adjustment. I don't have a friend to help out here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make that uh, square wave as flat as I can make it. As, as I turn this little probe uh, adjustment screw in here, you'll see that the, the shape of that square wave changes dramatically because that's what I'm doing is changing the capacitance on the feed line here of this probe. So I want to make it just as square as I can make it and when I've done that then I've achieved my uh, my goal. Alright, so that probe's adjusted and let's uh, do the right channel, channel 2. adjustment point up here and I will adjust this probe as well. Same thing as I turn the probe you'll see that the shape change and what I want to do is make it square. And I'd say that's about it. Alright so my probes are adjusted for maximum frequency response. Alright we have the uh, intensity control for the beam. We have plenty of intensity here, much more than we need, but that's good because as your frequency goes up you may need to increase it or as the years go by it's possible that the tube could lose some strength and you need to uh, intensify the beam. We have a focus control. Which we sharpen the image. Okay. And um, we have internal triggering, line triggering where we're running off the 60 hertz, external triggering where the uh, external trigger point is right, right at this location, um, and then external divided by 10, and then finally the XY input. Uh, the X input would be at this point, and the Y input would be on the uh, channel 1. We have a um, channel 1 selection, dual trace selection, channel 2 selection. The position controls for channel 1, position control for channel 2. Works fine. We have the input selections for, right now they're on ground, we have DC, AC, differences that you put a capacitor in line with AC, 
and uh, that helps save the equipment from any DC pulse that you might uh, not want it to see. Um, okay, I've got a uh, signal generator sending a signal in. Okay, we have a signal generator feeding in a uh, about a uh, hundred thousand hertz signal, and right now the, we're we're not able to see the screen. We don't see the signal on the screen because the trigger hasn't been adjusted yet. So I reach over and I can adjust the trigger. We should lock in, and there we go. And. We can go, that's on auto, we have normal, there's a TV mode where you lock in at the 15 kilohertz frequency of the television, if you do television work. There is a, uh, a trigger hold off, we change the point at which this thing triggers. Um, slope, we can change the slope, reverse it. And that pretty much is it. Okay, what I've done now is I've connected my my scope up so that I am in the XY position. So I'm feeding my X-axis signal in on this connector, which is coming from my ramp feed, and then I am I'm using my probe to read the frequency coming in that's being swept from my sweep generator. And here we can see the frequency running from, well, a very quick zero up through about five, um, oh, about five kilocycles, somewhere in there. And then we look at the screen and you can see that uh, we are slow to the left and then we are are picking up frequency as we go across the screen. I can um, make it a little more visible by uh, finding a, a little bit different frequency. It spreads it out just a little better here on the screen. It's, it's I think a little better. You can see the slow frequency here and then we get higher as we go across. So that's the XY position of the scope. And then here we get to do my little trick where I'm looking at the transfer function of this ceramic 455 kilohertz filter and using the XY position of the scope and a sweep generator I'm able to display for you the uh, uh, characteristic of this filter as we are near 455 kilohertz approaching it from the left then we hit it we see a big resonant peak and then as we go off to the right, we see the, uh, the signal drop dramatically. So it resonates at 455 kilohertz. Just a demonstration of the XY capability. So the winner of the scope will also receive, um, as a part of the package, 240 megahertz probes that are included. And there is a service manual with 11 by 17 pages, uh, fold out pages in the back for the drawings to make it easier to read. So you'll be getting an entire package. You'll be on your way. Thank you for listening and I hope you win.